The law of the wolf clearly states when you expect the least, then and only then you will get the most. You are locked on Wolf Pack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolf Pack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's title sponsor is LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Happy Monday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle, Kenton Gibbs. It was a law of the wolf weekend for men's basketball, especially. But if I, if my notes are correct, I think NC state might've won in just about every sport. Quick shout out to NC state gymnastics. They are ACC champions softballs on a seven game win streak women's basketball won a thriller we'll talk about that baseball won their opening series wrestling dominated Duke. a whole lot of success to celebrate here on monday but we start here with men's basketball going down to clemson and picking up what we've all been desperately waiting for a quad one win they were able to knock off the tigers by a score of 78 to 77 Kenton, what are the main things that jump off the page from this win for you? You know, Ben Middlebrooks having a revenge game would have been an immaculate moment, right? We were all hoping that that this was going to be a game where it was just a a complete utter domination by him and and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, Coach Kevin Keats said, hey, shut up with all the nonsense. I got a quad one win. But here's the problem. You got to stack them. You got to stack them. But when I'm looking at just this game, showed you a lot of what you see out of NC State men's basketball. We've talked all year about how it's been about the fight, the fight, the fight. Regardless of what this team did execution-wise, you could always say this team has fought, this team has fought, this team has fought. This game was no different. There were multiple points where you wanted to say, all right, that's it. Let's go ahead and bury this wolf pack. Let's go ahead and pack it in. And what did they do? Yeah, don't bury us yet. Yeah, we got a little life in us yet. We got a little something to us. Still at this point, which, you know, you look at and it's not surprising because we talk about the fact that Coach Kevin Keats will always have this team playing hard. But to execute enough to come up with a win down the stretch here, to start fast and hot enough to not need a ton down the stretch here, to have Mo Diara, three-point specialist, show up in this one. You know, it's it's a moment where you, you sit here and say the basketball guys were smiling down on you you take this win you learn from the mistakes and again you look to stack some quad one wins to end this thing out because just when we thought this program was dead wouldn't it be the most nc state thing ever for coach keese to say oh, we got a little life you said no dance no chance well we might do a little salsa we might just do a little waltz on you going to clemson has been a difficult task for multiple teams of years past it has not been an easy place to play And, you know, especially after last year, Clemson takes your lunch money, not once, not twice, but three times. Unfortunately, we've been kind of hoping that other teams could win some games that would bump their rating up. And that's the way we'd get a quad one. Instead, we took matters into our own hands and just went down there and got one ourselves. And this game was a game of runs. And we've we've talked a lot recently about NC State. A lot of times you can probably tell the end result based on what they do in the first half. You can tell based on what they look like if they have shown up mentally. And in this game, they showed up. They wanted to be there. You could tell early. Clemson jumped out to a little bit of an early lead. NC State then quickly took the lead back and then held the lead for the remainder of the first half. And I think it even ballooned out to like a 10-point lead with two minutes left before halftime. Clemson was able to shorten that with a quick 6-0 run there. But... We talked about how important 
the the fight is and the the discipline is and just the aggression is and you can mask a lot of issues just with trying to overbear your opponent and you saw that type of thing in this game you know rebounding we didn't win the rebounding battle but you kept it close where it wouldn't kill you a lot of times it's the fundamental type stuff that will keep you in a game long enough to give you a chance to win it. Clemson then roared back in the second half. I think it was like a 14-0 run to come out of the half, and that was that was a tough punch to withstand. But the same kind of storyline with this NC State team, fight and fight and fight, found themselves in it at the end of the game. And I thought it was spectacular to, to get the ball into the hands of DJ Horn. Everyone knows that DJ Horn is going to get the ball, and you still found a way to get him a clean look on a shot that he excels at. That runner in the lane, he hits at a high percentage. Able to find him, he sinks it, hold on for the win. I thought it was a spectacular effort nonetheless. DJ Horn was hot as fish grease in this game. I mean, let's let's make no bones about it. When you have a guy 50% from the field, but damn near 50% from three as well, that will get it done every time. In the words of my wonderful, lovely co-host, Grayson Boone, that'll play. That'll play. That type of shooting is, is something special. And then you combine that with DJ Burns having – what seemed to be a little bit of a resurgent game. You combine that right. with Modiara coming in long. You combine that with J.D. Taylor giving you something offensively. And now all of a sudden, you can put on an offensive performance to where, was the defense perfect? No. Was this one of our better defensive performances of the year? No. I, I don't think that Clemson did anything spect- particularly spectacular offensively. NC State, again, fought, battled, did what we needed to do to come out on this win. And, and this win was not the ugly, grinded out, low scoring, 69 to 57 game that we normally see out of this team when a win. It was high scoring. It was upbeat. It was a track meet on hardwood. But we just happen to be a little bit faster than the other guys in this one. And something else we talk a lot about is guys that have struggled offensively, but still finding a way to make an impact in the game. And their stat sheets might not tell you a whole lot. If you watch the end of that second half, Michael O'Connell had a massive drive in the lane to get a big bucket late. And then Casey Morsell had a very key tie up to get NC State the possession back. Two big plays that maybe fly under the radar a tiny bit because, of course, you have DJ Horn going off for 27. But it was a little bit of everything, and the sum of that was enough to shock the Tigers on the road. So this is an impressive win. We've talked a little bit about the doomsday clock. I think it now bumps you that back. I have a couple more breaths of life here. Like Kenton said a couple minutes ago, now you have to stack these wins. You have Syracuse on Tuesday, and then you have Boston College next weekend. Both of these are home games. This part of the season... Your back is still up against the wall. They're both quad three opportunities. No excuse. If you want to if you want to keep breathing, these are two games you absolutely have to have. And then you just keep seeing what you got from there. There's only six games left, three at home, three on the road. A lot of work to still do. But nonetheless, this was an excellent win on the road at Clemson. Yeah, like you said, the law of the wolf, when you expect the least, you get the most. And it just... <sighs> It just feels like one of those moments where you're just, don't do that. Don't do what? Don't give me hope. Don't give us hope. You know, we're Hawkeye. That's Jeremy Renner. You and him are twins, by the way. You and, no. you and Jeremy Renner. I'm just saying, we need the DNA. To, nah, I'm messing with you. But seriously, that's that's one of those moments where we're, we're sitting here saying, don't give us hope. And, and Coach Keith says, I'm not going to listen, y'all. We'll give hope and ice cream on this one. And that's what it is. And now they're coming back to Raleigh with a quad one win, which, by the way, I don't think we've had one of those in about, what, a year and some change or something it's like that? It's been a little close been a while. to that, yeah. yeah. It's been a while. If nothing else, I want to see this team just fight till the very end. So good effort on the road. Up next, we're going to be discussing the overtime thriller for the women's team in Raleigh, pulling off a win against Georgia Tech after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are perfect for that role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to interview and hire. It gives you access to professionals that you simply cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of this while making the process easier and intuitive. Hiring is easier when you have this many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% 
of small businesses get a qualified candidate within just 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, they simply might not have the time or resources to effectively hire. So LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make this process easier. They have since launched a feature that will assist you in writing job descriptions. 2.5 million small businesses are using LinkedIn right now for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Middle portion of our Monday show now transitioning over to the women's side of things. Picked up a thrilling overtime win over Georgia Tech in Reynolds Coliseum on Sunday. 86-85 over the Yellow Jackets. And this was a little bit of a an unexpected game, I think I would say. Georgia Tech has struggled a little bit in the ACC, but it was just one of those games where A, anyone in the ACC can beat you at any given time, and B, anyone can get hot at any given time. Anyone that plays in the ACC is a good basketball player, and you saw that in Georgia Tech shooting uncharacteristically well. They shot about 48% from three, which is well over their season average, but NC State found a way to withstand this with despite not even shooting that well themselves from deep. But Isaiah James had a 30 ball. How many times has Isaiah James had a 30 ball over the course of the last couple of weeks? It feels like every other night she's putting up 30 plus. She's on yeah. a tear right now. Yeah, she's on a real heater. And it's, it's helping this team out in a major way because we talk about the fact that at times, Westmore Coast teams have that moment where they go cold. And sometimes when you have that moment, it's no longer about system and structure and scheme. You just need to roll the ball out to your one player who, you know, be it Alyssa Kunain in the post, be it um, Isaiah James creating and doing it how she does it, be it Diamond Jones last year doing it how how she did it, you know what I mean? Or Diamond Johnson, I apologize, doing it how she did it. You sometimes just need somebody you can roll the ball out to and get yourself a bucket. And Isaiah has proven herself to be extremely reliable in that role. But also, I want to touch on what you said there in terms of, hey, this was a game where Georgia Tech shot uncharacteristically well because you look at 85 points to be put up, right? And you say, well, they only scored nine in overtime. So they put up 76 in regulation. That must have meant that NC State was playing bad defense. If you watch that game, they were there. Will I lie and say that this is the best defense I've ever seen from this team in particular? No, absolutely not. However, they were contesting shots. They were closing out. They were forcing players in the – tough shots they were just hitting shots that you live with and they they're hitting shots that the defense is designed to say you cannot take away everything we will give them that and if they hit this we'll be okay with that they just hit those shots and sometimes another team will just they'll they'll hit their stride they'll have a day that's unbelievable for some and this was that day for Georgia Tech but plenty of credit needs to go to this NC State women's team because again they found a way to withstand that among among several different factors. I mean, we already talked about Isaiah James going for 30, but Madison Hayes put up a double-double. Mimi Collins played in this game, and that that was very good to see. Scary injury just recently, hoping not to lose her for very long. Turns out she plays very soon after that, and she made a little bit of a difference in this game. Also, you had Sinai Rivers, 10-5-5. and River Baldwin was a, a very efficient 16-6. and This is just a solid team that keeps finding ways to win. That is a mark of a well-coached fundamental team, and Anytime you shoot 47% overall, that's also going to help your case. 60% on non-three-pointers. It was a little bit of a struggle from the perimeter on Sunday, but still found a way to withstand a very hot shooting Georgia Tech. I I thought to myself, am I watching, did the NC State men's and women's basketball do a little trading places here? (laughs) What happened? Do we have a Lindsay Lohan uh, classic? What was it? It was something Friday. Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. Are we seeing a Freaky Friday on this on this weekend where the team that normally shoots the blood out the ball is struggling and can't do anything, and the team that is normally can't throw a, a, a you know can't throw a brick in the ocean from the beach is all of a sudden uh, you know Modiara is pulling off his his best Ray Allen impression, and so I I look at this game and I say, hey, you got the win, you did what you needed to do, right? Like that's the most important thing. We're, for both of these teams, getting the win is the most important thing. And for the women's team, showing that you're not front runners, showing that when you have to battle 
and face adversity, you can still come back and pull those games off. That's important. That's going to be important. When you talk about getting that one line, because our, our women's basketball team is in an extremely different position than our men's, right? Like, we're not talking about are they going to make the tournament. They can lose every day for the rest of the regular season to make the tournament. We're talking about are they on the one line or not, right? And this the games like this, they don't help you exponentially in staying on the one line, but they are a benefit in that you don't have a quad three or four quad two or three loss. I don't know what Georgia Tech is in terms of women's basketball, but I'm, I know they're not quad one. So you're looking at this game and saying, we don't have a quad two, three, four loss. That's definitely going to help you. And that's definitely going to show folks, hey, this NC State team is not just about we can get you down and keep you down and pound on you. This is a team that can say, if we need to show some grit. We need to show some stick to it. We need to show some, some, we got some dog in us even when we're trailing. We can do that too. Teams that earn a one seed are the teams that can go on the road and completely astonish a ranked Notre Dame team. And they can also come back home and withstand a team that just gets unreal hot from deep, but still yeah. find a way to win that game. And that's yeah. exactly what they were able to accomplish. So a little bit of a, a nail biter, maybe uncharacteristically uh, nervous about a Georgia Tech team coming into Reynolds, but nonetheless able to secure an 86 to 85 overtime win on Sunday. Now, they're not out of the woods yet because they have a massive week coming up. And we've talked about them kind of working their way through a little bit of a gauntlet uh, here in the month of February. They've made it through the first portion of that gauntlet. Now they have another portion. They have back-to-back -back road games at UNC and at Duke this week. You talk about wanting to secure a one seed, have to probably take both of those to keep yourself in contention for that. But obviously – the main focus is just winning ball games, and Westmore has these ladies continuing to find ways to do so. So impressive win to stay afloat on Sunday, continue to keep that momentum rolling. There is no better way to put it than how you just did. Both of those teams are not only late risers normally in the season, but they're also triangle falls. These are also teams that Duke, regardless of how good, bad, and different they are, they have shown to play NC State tough year in, year out. The girls in baby blue, I don't need to say nothing more about them, right? Like, that is that is what it is. I don't care what the competition is. If it's power walking, throw me my schedule shape-ups, me and Grayson are going to win it if there's those dorks in baby blue competing against us. You understand? And that's just what it is. So you always want to get that win. But that I believe they're in the top 25 as well, but just outside it now uh, due to some recent play. But either way it goes, that's a very quality team. That's a win that you need to get. You know, you need to go over to their big gym where they fill it with 6,500 every game. Yeah. You know, even though they've only done it twice this year, you know, and, and show them how it's done. Expecting to see a whole lot of red in that 6,500, by the way. They play at Chapel Hill on Thursday. I expect uh, the Wolfpack faithful to travel well for that one. Coming up next, we're going to round out our Monday show recapping baseball's opening series win over VCU. After a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is FanDuel. The wait is almost over for our state of North Carolina as FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is coming to our state. On March 11th, under a month to go, we'll finally be able to bet on all of our favorite teams in all of our favorite sports. With FanDuel, there's tons of ways for us to get in on the action. You can bet on anything from money line to over-unders to which team will make a little noise in March Madness. This all comes on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, with live betting, you can even pick which player will put up the next bucket, and maybe even the one after that. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on so you can be the first to know when FanDuel goes live in North Carolina. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Last couple of minutes of our Monday show here. Have to take this time to congratulate head coach of NC State Baseball, Elliot Avent, secured his 1,000th career win just at NC State. Of course, he came to us from New Mexico State, so he is well over 1,000 total wins, but 1,000 wins just here at NC State. Secured this on Sunday as the Wolfpack defeated VCU two out of three games. They won on Friday and Sunday. They dropped the Saturday game in between. But, Kenton, how big of a deal 
is Elliot Avent securing 1,000 wins in an NC State uniform. He's the most decorated baseball coach in NC State history. I feel like it's safe to say that in, in you know, mod, in the modern era and all that good stuff. But moving beyond that, I it's hard to even express how much he is NC State in a lot of ways, yes. right? His players talk about there's nobody who is a a – more caring human being and that'll push you harder. The media members love him. ever since I started covering sports for the technician way back when there was nobody who gave me better interviews, better quotes, and, and who just was, you know, genuinely more caring than Elliot Avent, man. That, that guy, Coach Avent is a class act and nobody, and when I say nobody, I mean nobody deserves a thousand more than this man. It's it's a special accomplishment, and to do it against his alma mater as well. Right. What a full circle moment. What a full circle moment. I'd imagine that maybe uh, the scheduling department had the script uh, for the early portion of the 2024 season. They saw that as a cool opportunity to bring things full circle for Coach Avent. But, yeah, Kenton hit the nail on the head here. He embodies NC State. He is probably one of NC State's most vocal ambassadors for this university always has been he's an nc state lifer he's an nc state legend i would argue that no other coach at nc state deserves success more than elliot avent does everything that he's been through over the course of his tenure this is now his 28th year and again we talked about this a little bit on friday being at one spot for that long and winning this many games is probably not something you're going to see uh very commonly in the future here and so this should absolutely be celebrated as much as possible. Thrilled that Avent was able to achieve such a milestone here at our school. He is one of us. And so it, it was excellent to see that uh, taking place on Sunday. Breaking down some of the games, I'm not going to do a, a an extensive recap, but I'll basically I'll give you my one major takeaway from each of the three games. So game one on Friday, NC State won 6-1. to one. Sam Highfield returned to a starter role, Friday starter role something that we've been desperately wanting to see him thrive in. But my main takeaway, Shane Van Dam looked excellent in relief. And he has been a name kind of tossed around that could potentially replace Willardson in the weekend rotation. For now, you'll see Van Dam coming out of the bullpen, but he was spectacular. Four innings of scoreless relief. Fastball is going to register between 94 and 97 at some point. Shane Van Dam is going to be a hot commodity, pun intended, coming out of that bullpen. I thought he was spectacular. Game two, NC State actually lost by a score of nine to six. My main takeaway in this one, the pitching and the defense. Dom Fritton was tagged for five earned runs. I don't think that's any reason to worry. Of course, we saw his body of work last year. He's going to be fine, but Dom Fritton struggled a little bit. Logan Whitaker struggled a little bit. The defense struggled a little bit. They committed four errors. Not so much a deeper indictment for the rest of the season, but it just speaks to some of the things that we saw last year. You have to clean up the fundamentals and make the routine plays or else they can snowball on you in that instance. So you're going to lose games against teams that can play baseball at a high level. And VCU at times can be one of those. So that one kind of is what it is. But on Sunday, wrapped up the series win with a score of 5-3. to three. Their freshman, Ryan Marone, the lefty, spectacular. Absolutely dazzled over five innings, registered eight strikeouts. I think he attacks the zone aggressively. He mixes speeds very well, a little bit like a seasoned vet. And I think even saying that, he'll probably shore some things up in terms of pitch location and pitch sequencing. I think he's going to be a weapon for NC State moving forward. Very impressed with him. And then I guess overarchingly, because I didn't really talk about it much, but offensively, I think it's going to be a little bit of a slow burn. And you're going to see some guys rise to the occasion. I think a lot of younger guys contributed at a higher level, but there's also going to be games that you're going to need to rely on pitching and defense to win games as well. So all in all, a, a good series win to open the year. No midweek games this week as they're flying all the way out to the islands. They play Hawaii next weekend, so they will uh, travel extremely west before you see them play again, but certainly a fun non-conference matchup to look forward to at the end of next week. Kenton, any other baseball comments you have for us? The guavas in Hawaii are absolutely amazing, but this is a business trip, fellas. Stay focused. Be locked in on the task. Get the job done. This is a very, this is a team that 
you know, many people think very highly of, including us too. The the guys in our pitching rotation right now, for the most part, outside of Ron Calm Dom, who we know he's going to get it together, have looked solid to say the least. I don't think anybody came in expecting like, we got a bunch of big bats in this lineup. We got, hey, three through three through seven. Everybody can knock that thing over the wall in a hurry. Nobody came in expecting that. But we did expect the pitching to be much improved. We did expect the pitching and defense to be thorough. So the defense not being thorough so far, a little bit concerning. But everything else, so far, so good. That'll do it for us here on Monday. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in with us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. And hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Tell us what you think about the men's win on the road at Clemson, the women's thrilling win in overtime over Georgia Tech at home, and Pac-9, how they began the season with a series dub over VCU. We'll see you all tomorrow. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.